how to manage construction. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about the difference between management and leadership, how you can approach both and get us super laser focused on how we can implement good management practices on your construction project. So if you're into that, you've come to the right place, let's go. So let me be clear about something. I really need to align with the industry when it comes to command and control and create a clear definition here. Command and control of people is bad because it creates a controlling, toxic environment where people can't do their best work. Okay, we've seen examples of this. I'm sure everybody knows examples like what happened in World War II. Hitler was a very command and control type leader and he was a leader because he had influence but he wasn't a good leader and his commanders could not think and react or basically command within their spheres, right? And in World War II, when the Allied forces were advancing, they missed a really, really key opportunity to advance their panzer units because Hitler would not allow them to be moved without his express permission and he was asleep. That gave the Allied forces enough time to make critical advances. So that kind of command and control is not great. Now, there is a type of command and control that is great, and that is the command in control of an environment, meaning that it has to be clean, that it has to be in order, that it has to be organized, that it has to be safe. We can absolutely command and control the environment. If you want to know how to manage construction, let's separate the terms manage from leadership and the management part is you're controlling the environment, you're commanding and controlling the environment, you're managing the environment so that people can do their best work. Leadership is something completely different. Leadership deals with motivating people and building teams and collaborating and communicating. It's a much different thing. So I figured the best thing to do in this video was to separate those two out and to talk about the key considerations that you can follow on your project. And if you like it, please like this video. It means a lot. It gets the content out. All right, so here are some management tasks that can really make sure that the right environment is there for the crews that will be on your project site. So first, let me give you this image. So you are helping to plan and set up an environment so that when your trade partners come to the project site, they can succeed. So your trades need the tools, the equipment, the materials, the labor, the information, the permissions, the layout, the space to go do their work. And we have to provide that. So the providing of that is key. So let's talk about the management tasks right now. Planning and organization. So it is your job if you're managing construction to make sure that they're in pre-construction and design, that you have a proper budget, that you have have a good schedule, which is also a production plan, and that you have a supply chain that is going to feed that project site. That is an environment that we need to provide for our trade partners. Number two, the operational system or the operation system that you're going to use on your site. You can also call it a project delivery system. But when trade partners come to your project, there needs to be a system. This is how we run our project management and our administration. This is how we run our meetings. This is how we run our quality control. This is how we run our our safety, right? So everything from a system standpoint, a system and a process standpoint has to be there set up, ready to go and be managed so that trade partners can do their best work. Number three, because you have an operating system, you must have feedback loops and metrics, right? So the ability to measure key things. So if you have the right environment, you have all of the right resources, and now you have an operating system, you need to create feedback loops in the form of KPIs, other metrics, reporting, ensuring compliance to make sure that things are going according to the operating system. And so that is something that must be managed so people can do their best work. Number four, problem solving strategies, whether it's identifying, discussing, and solving like problems on the project site or overcoming delays or preventing impacts, that has to be a system that's in place, right? So most of the time it's not a people problem, or I would say it's never a people problem. It's always a system process or cultural or behavioral problem. We need to have a system on the project site that must be managed that allows us to prevent those problems, to look six weeks out, to look a week out, to find roadblocks, to adjust constraints, and to recover from impacts and delays. That is something that must be managed so that people can do their best work. Number five, administrative duties. Obviously things like uh, RFIs, submittals, change orders, pay applications, these are crucial to the operation of the project site. So those are also things that can be managed because they're not people. And if you 
manage them, then you get people what they need so they can do their best work. So all administrative tasks and administrative processes must be set up as a part of your management of the project. Number six, the training program that you will follow, which can be looped into your meetings and your huddles and more systematized, is a system that you will manage, again, to support people. And then when we talk about operational efficiency, looking at one piece flow, looking at our ability to stabilize the project, looking at our ability to flow together, to see our limiting factors, to remove or adjust constraints. These are things that must be managed so that people can do their best work. So now we need to go into leadership. So that's the management piece. Now we need to look at leadership. So we only manage things and environments. Let's lead people. And the first on my list is vision and strategy, right? So vision and strategy, the vision for the project, the overall strategy of the project, that's where you're inspiring and providing good clarity and communication for all of the people on site. See, we're not managing the people. Now we're leading the people with our vision and strategy. So when you're on your project, you've managed these key things. Now it's time to lead because we're dealing with people. Make sure that everybody knows where we're going, what the vision for the project is, and what the conditions of satisfaction are. Number two, inspiration and motivation. I love to provide, from a leadership standpoint, motivation and inspiration in meetings, when we're doing the quality pre-construction meeting, when we're doing our weekly meetings to look ahead and to create our weekly work plans, to work with the trade partners, the foreman there to inspire them, right? In our day planning with our foreman, but especially where I like to really motivate and inspire people from a leadership standpoint on the project is in the morning worker huddle where we have the entire job site and when we do celebrate or standouts. Like these are the key times to like inspire the people with vision. Don't just go up there and be like, oh, blah, blah, I'm supposed to do this. Like be like, we're building the cleanest project in Arizona, or we're building a laboratory that's going to do research for children, or we are here to respect each other, right? Like really get some motivation and passion in there. Remember, we're not controlling, we're not managing them, we're leading them by inspiring them. Number three, a leadership concept that is just absolutely amazing is making sure that clear communication communication is happening throughout the project site. So clear communication from the construction company to the project, okay? Clear communication from the project management leaders on site to and back to and throughout with the trade partners and to make sure that your meeting system has a flow to it to get communication all the way to the workers and foremen and that the deliverables that you have, and I'll use a production plan as an example here, communicates all the way to the worker and foreman level and that there are feedback loops. So remember, a lean company is where your leaders and your people boots on the ground get closer together with a feedback loop. So both communication channels must be open. And that's why, again, I love the morning worker huddle because we provide communication to them and they can provide communication to us through feedback and it has to work both ways. So communication is key. It's a leadership concept. And number four, and this is going to be the last one I talk about, is relationship building. On your project site, if you really want things to go well, develop a relationship with a trade partner that's meaningful. Develop a relationship. And what I mean by appropriate is not some buddy-buddy do favors, ignore each other's bad behavior type relationship. I'm talking about a real authentic relationship relationship where filled with partnering and respect and where you hold each other accountable. That is key. You can do that at the trade partner level with the foreman, with the workers, shake their hands, get out to know people and people that feel seen, people that they like, people that they know, people that they're connected with really like to do things for others. And so if you want to run a remarkable project site and manage it and lead it, also create really good connection. It works every time. And so leave the command and control and the management to things and environments and let's start leading people with the guidelines that I gave you. So I'm going to turn this into a beautiful Canva graphic and a blog post actually in the description below and I just really hope you're able to use those and really implement that when you're managing construction. I hope you've enjoyed this video. On we go.